Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I'm going to walk you through the process of valuing British American tobacco stock so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. British American Tobacco, or BAT, manufactures and sells cigarettes, tobacco, and other nicotine products. It is the second largest tobacco company in the world based on revenue. The largest is Philip Morris. Its cigarette brands include Dunhill, Kent, Lucky Strike, Paul Mall, Rothmans, Newport, and Camel. The company's popular non-combustible products are its e-cigarette brands, Vipe, Views, and Glow. When you hear the word combustible, that means the product requires burning for consumption, like traditional cigarettes and cigars. E-cigarettes and Chew are examples of non-combustible products. According to studies, most of the harm from tobacco is caused by combustion, not nicotine. Since most tobacco companies, like this company and Philip Morris, are growing their non-combustible segment at a greater pace than their combustible segment, these types of alternatives, like vapes and e-cigs, as well as higher cigarette prices, help this company grow and return great value to its investors. All tobacco companies are constantly up against lawsuits, high governmental regulation, and excess taxes. Many investors do not invest in companies like this due to its negative moral and environmental effects. Just something to consider when investing in a vice company such as tobacco, cannabis, gambling, and alcohol. You know, all the fun things in life. The company is headquartered in London, England and was founded in 1902. The ticker trades on the New York Stock Exchange, Mexican Bolsa, Deutsche Börse, Zetra, Johannesburg, and London Stock Exchange. Let me give you a little background on the company before we get into the numbers. The reason the company was formed way back in 1902 is because the UK and the US agreed to form a joint venture, the British American Tobacco Company Limited. The parent companies agreed not to trade in each other's domestic territory and to assign trademarks, export businesses, and overseas subsidiaries to the joint venture. So the US and UK parent companies focused on selling cigarettes in Canada, China, Germany, South Africa, New Zealand, and Australia. Way back in the early 1900s in China, BAT inherited a factory in Shanghai. And by 1919, the Shanghai factory was producing more than 240 million cigarettes per week. In 1911, the American Tobacco Company sold its share of the company. The UK gradually reduced its shares, but it was not until 1980 that it divested its remaining interest in the company. At its peak in 1937, BAT manufactured and distributed 55 billion cigarettes in China. The company's assets were seized by the Japanese in 1941 following their 1937 invasion. In 1949, the company was ejected from China following the foundation of the People's Republic. In 1976, the group companies were reorganized under a new holding company, Bat Industries. In 1994, Bat acquired its former parent, American Tobacco Company. This brought the Lucky Strike and Paul Mall brands into BAT's portfolio. In 1999, it merged with Rothmans International, which included a share in a factory in Burma. This made it the target of criticism from human rights groups. It sold its share of the factory in 2003 after an exceptional request from the British government. In 2002, BAT lost a lawsuit about the right to sell cigarettes under the Marlboro brand in the UK. It had acquired Rothmans, which had previously bought a license to use a name from Philip Morris. Philip Morris's attorneys invoked a get out clause for the case of a major change of ownership. In 2003, BAT acquired Italy's state tobacco company. This acquisition would elevate BAT to the number two position in Italy, the second largest tobacco market in the EU. The scale of the enlarged operations would bring significant opportunities to compete and grow Italy's local brands and BAT's international brands. In August 2003, BAT acquired a 68% holding in the Serbian tobacco company Duvanska Industrial, 
allowing local manufacture of its brands, freeing them from import duties. In the longer term, export opportunities are planned as neighboring countries in Southeast Europe develop free trade agreements. In July 2004, the U.S. business of British American Tobacco was combined with that of R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company under the R.J. Reynolds name. In January 2007, BAT closed its remaining UK production plant in Southampton with the loss of over 600 jobs. However, the global research and development operation and some financial functions will continue on the site. In July 2008, BAT acquired the cigarette and snus operations of the Scandinavian Tobacco Group. BAT acquired 60% of Indonesia's Bentel Group in 2009 before increasing its stake to 100% the following year. In May 2011, BAT acquired the Colombian company Productura Tabacalera. In October 2015, BAT acquired the Croatian tobacco company TDR Brands and its factory in Kafener. In October 2016, BAT offered to buy the remaining 58% of U.S. cigarette maker Reynolds American in a $47 billion takeover that would create the world's largest tobacco company with brands including Newport, Lucky Strike, and Paul Mall. In January 2017, Reynolds agreed to an increased $49 billion deal. The deal was completed in July 2017. In April 2017, BAT announced the acquisition of a number of Bulgarian cigarette brands from Bulgar Tobac for more than 100 million euros. In March 2021, the company bought a stake of close to 20% in the Canadian-based cannabis producer Organigram for 126 million pounds as part of a diversification strategy. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 73 billion market cap. They're trading at $33 a share and they have 2.2 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. All the numbers on my Excel file are in US dollars. I converted the numbers from British pounds to US dollars. When we look at the company's financials later, they'll be in British pounds. So you can see they generate a lot of free cash flow from 10.3 billion to over 12 billion. That's why they pay such a high dividend. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that's also really high, close to eight and a half billion. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that's pretty steady from 2019 to 2021. It jumps in 2022 to close to 35 billion. Here's their most recent income statement. The full year 2022 compared to 2021 compared to 2020. Revenue of 28 billion pounds, up from 26 billion in 2020 and 2021. Let me give you a breakdown of the 28 billion. A little less than half their revenue is in the US, 12.6 billion pounds. South America and Sub-Saharan Africa, 4.2 billion. Europe is 6.3 billion. Asia Pacific, Middle East and Africa, 4.5 billion. And their revenue is up from 2021 in every category. Here's a breakdown of their revenue by product. 1.4 billion from vapes. Views is their biggest brand, VUSE. THP is 1.1 billion. Their main product for THP is Glow. THP stands for Tobacco Heating Product. Modern Oral is 400 million. Their biggest brand is Velo. Traditional Oral like Snuff, 1.2 billion. And regular combustible cigarettes, 23 billion. And revenue is up in every category. Vapor is up the most. It's up more than 50% from 2020 to 2021, then another 50% from 2021 to 2022. Combustibles is up from 2021. It did decline from 2020 to 2021, but they have the highest revenue ever in 2022 at over 23 billion pounds. In order to generate the 28 billion of revenue, they had to buy raw materials like tobacco and paper. That was 4.8 billion. They have to pay their employees 3 billion. 
They have depreciation and amortization, 1.3 billion. They had a gain of other operating income of 700 million and a $9 billion other operating expense. They had their highest profit from operations, 10.5 billion. Then they have to pay interest on their debt, 1.6 billion. Their profit before taxes, 9.3 billion pounds. Taxes of 2.5 billion. So their profit for the year is down a little bit from last year. It was 7 billion, now it's 6.8 billion. They did have less shares outstanding in 2020, 280 million. It went up to 297 million. It's down a little from 2021 at 293 million. Let's go through their earnings slides from their 2022 performance. Delivering transformation, combined performance and ESG summary 2022. A decade of transformation. 2013, our first vapor product launched in the UK. 2016, our first tobacco heating product launched in Japan. 2017, our modern oral nicotine pouches are launched. 2019, our new category portfolio is consolidated under three global brands, Views, Velo, and Glow. 2020, our strategy to deliver a better tomorrow by reducing the health impact of our business is launched. 2021, Views becomes number one global vaping brand by value share and the first global carbon neutral vape brand. New categories, Views, Glow, and Velo. Since launching our first vapor device in 2013, we have made real and lasting progress. Over the past 10 years, we have been transforming into a truly multi-category consumer products business with a mission to stimulate the senses of new adult generations. We are changing, we are building a better tomorrow. Today, we are creating new products that encourage adult smokers to switch to scientifically substantiated, less risky alternatives. Our purpose is to reduce the health impact of our business by offering a greater choice of enjoyable and less risky products for our consumers. Dividends, the board has declared a dividend of 231 pence per ordinary share, payable in four equal installments of 58 pence per ordinary share. Board changes, I was pleased to welcome Veronique Laurie to the board in September, 2022. Veronique joined as an independent non-executive director and member of the nominations and audit committees. In the THP category, our flagship THP Glow continued to make category volume share gains while also increasing revenue by 24% in 2022. We are seeing encouraging early results from our Hyper X2 launch in Japan following the national rollout in October 2022. Hyper X2 is now available in 21 markets around the world. In the modern oral category, Velo continued its strong volume share leadership in Europe, now 69%, largely driven by innovations including Velo Mini pouches and Velo Max ranges. And revenue in the modern oral category, predominantly through Velo, was up 45%. Let's look at some metrics. The number of non-combustible consumers, 22.5 million. That's a big jump from 2020 of 13.5 million. Non-combustible are the people who use vapes, e-cigarettes, chew. Cigarette and THP volume growth, minus 10 basis points. So it's down 0.1%. Last year up 10 basis points, before that up 30 basis points. Because lots of people moving away from traditional cigarettes and using more alternative things. Vape is increasing a lot, 612 million units, up 14%. Last year was 535 million, before that 344 million. Their THP sticks is up to 24 billion, that's up 26%. 4 billion modern oral pouches, up 22%. Traditional oral, down 8%. 605 billion cigarettes, down 5%. Other tobacco is down 10%. Revenue is up 8%, 27.7 billion British pounds. Revenue from new categories is up a ton, 41%. Operating profit, 10.5 billion, up 3%. Operating margins are down from 40% to 38%. I think that's mainly due to inflation. It's a lot more expensive to pay employees. Also, materials are more expensive, like tobacco and paper. Adjusted operating margin is up to 45%, which is higher than last year, 43.4%. Diluted EPS is down 1%, 292 pence. 
Dividends per share is 231 pence, up 6%. Dividend payout ratio is 62%. That's dividend over net income. It was 66% last year. Operating cash flow is up 7% to 10.4 billion pounds. It was under 10 billion last year and the year before. Free cash flow is 3.1 billion pounds, up a lot, 23%. Their debt is up to 43.1 billion, down from 2020, but up 9% from 2021. A strong ROI of 10%. Revenue by region, 12.6 billion in the US, 4.2 billion in Canada, South America, and Sub-Sahara Africa. 6 billion in Europe, that's the blue here, dark blue. Asia Pacific Middle East, 4.5 billion, that's over here. They break up their business in four regions. They have five major product categories, 138 employee nationalities, and 50,000 plus employees. Very diverse company. The AM SSA region is Argentina, Brazil, Canada, Chile, Colombia, Nigeria, Mexico, South Africa. Those are the main countries, but there are other countries in there. The main countries in Europe are Belgium, Bulgaria, Czech Republic, Denmark, France, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Italy, Kazakhstan, Netherlands, Poland, Romania, Russia, Spain, Switzerland, Turkey, Ukraine, and the UK. And their Asia, Pacific, and Middle East, the key markets are Algeria, Australia, Bangladesh, Egypt, Gulf Cooperation Council, that includes Saudi Arabia, Japan, Malaysia, Morocco, New Zealand, Pakistan, South Korea, Taiwan, and Vietnam. Revenue by product category. New categories, 3 billion. Traditional oral, 1.2 billion. Sounds really sexual, right? Traditional oral. Combustibles, 23 billion, and other half a billion. These are our key brands in both the combustible and non-combustible categories. This ensures focus and investment on the brands and categories that will underpin the group's future performance. The strategic portfolio is non-combustibles, all brands within new categories, and the strategic traditional oral brands in Moist and Snus. Combustibles, Dunhill, Kent, Lucky Strike, Pall Mall, Rothmans, Newport, Natural American Spirit, and Camel. Vapor products are handheld battery powered devices that heat a liquid, called an e-liquid, to produce an inhalable aerosol commonly known as vapor. These products can be either open or closed systems. Open systems offer a customized vaping experience using a refillable tank. Closed systems work with disposable pre-filled cartridges offering greater convenience. THP is tobacco heating products. That's a new category of tobacco product designed to heat rather than burn tobacco. It creates an inhalable aerosol that contains nicotine and are also known as heat not burn products. Modern Oral. These products are our smoke-free oral nicotine products, sometimes called nicotine pouches, designed for use in the mouth. Consumers place a disposable nicotine pouch between their gum and upper lip where nicotine and flavors are released, and nicotine is absorbed through the tissues lining the mouth. Traditional Oral. This includes snus and snuff. Snus is a moist form of oral tobacco originating from Sweden. It's available in loose form or as pouches. The tobacco is typically mixed with water, salt, and aromas. Combustibles. The group sold 605 billion cigarette sticks and 16 billion OTP stick equivalents in 2022. OTP stands for Other Tobacco Products. The group operates in over 170 markets with 41 fully integrated cigarette manufacturing facilities in 39 markets. Views operates in 33 markets, Glow in 28 markets, Velo in 28 markets, Grizzly in 3 markets. We have Strong Foundations founded in 1902. It was first listed on the London Stock Exchange in 1912. It's part of the FTSE 100 since 1984. 6% dividend growth to 231 pence. 200 plus brands in our portfolio. Long history of delivering returns and cash flow to our shareholders with 6.9 billion pounds paid in 2022. Consumer-centric multi-category strategy focused on being a high growth consumer goods business, driving value from our combustibles business to generate the funds for investment. Accelerated growth in new categories supported by continuous investment 
simplifying the business to create the enterprise of the future, investing in new category products and expanding our portfolio beyond nicotine, 15% of revenues in non-combustibles, 629 million pounds of savings in 2022, with 1.9 billion realized over three years, and that's an excess of their original 1 billion pound target. New capabilities combined with our existing skills and experience are helping to radically redefine our organization. Brands with purpose to satisfy the evolving preference of adult consumers. 21 years in the Dow Jones indices, as well as open and transparent ESG reporting aligned to best practice frameworks. Sustainability front and center in all that we do, focused on reducing the health impact of our business, underpinned by excellence across our ESG priorities. 60 markets where our new category products are available. The group's policy is to pay dividends of 65% of long-term sustainable earnings. They paid dividends of 2.1 pounds in 2020, 2.16 pounds in 2021, and 2.18 pounds in 2022. And they pay a quarterly dividend, as you can see. Let's look at the capital structure. 95 billion of equity, 54 billion of debt. They're 64% equity, 36% debt. Their net debt is 49 billion, so that means they have 5 billion of cash on their balance sheet. I give them a whack of 9.8%, and that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 148 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $134 billion. We divide that by 2.2 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $60. They're trading at $33. So they're trading at a 45% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is a little higher than me. They're $69 a share. They say the stock is 53% undervalued. This is where the stock has been trading since 1995. It got really low in 2000. Looks like about $2 a share. And then there was a really nice run up from 2000 to 2008. It got to a little over $40. Then the Great Recession hit. It fell to about $23.24. And then from 2009 to 2017, it got to its highest point ever, over $70 a share. It's down about 50% since that peak. So it looks like there's a lot of upside potential. The stock really crashed in 2018. Ever since 2018, it really hasn't done that well. It did get up to about $46.47. But it has not broken through $50 in about five years. They pay a quarterly dividend. It was $0.75 cents in 2021. They dropped it to $0.74. Cents. Now it's down to $0.70. Cents. You don't really like to see a dividend decreasing, but the yield is still really high, 8.6%, which they can easily afford. It's only 51% of their free cash flow. And these dollar amounts are in US dollars. I'll show you their dividend in pounds. Their current yield is 58 pence. So you can see they are raising their dividend. The reason it appears their dividend is declining is the exchange rate. But they are raising their dividend. It's about three-fifths of one British pound. There are 13 companies in the same industry as BAT. And if BAT has number in red, they're worse than the median. If they have a number in blue, they're better. They spend the second most in CapEx, 750 million. All these numbers are in US dollars. Philip Morris spends the most, 1.1 billion. Their debt to equity ratio is better than the average, worse than the median. For every dollar of equity, they have 60 cents of debt. They pay the highest dividend on this list. They generate the most free cash flow. They rank third in market cap. They have really good price multiples. If they were in the US, they would definitely be over 100 billion market cap. But non-US companies tend to trade at a discount. Not that there's anything wrong with the UK, it's a great economy. But US companies just trade at a premium. It's just how it is. And all other countries generally trade at a discount. And some countries like Brazil trade at a huge discount. They generate the second most amount of revenue and their five-year annual revenue growth rate is equal to the median, lower than the average. These really big companies like Philip Morris, Altria, and BAT they're just not growing. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 45% discount. They've been around 121 years. And I don't think they're going anywhere. It's a really stable company, a great dividend, and it's a product people really can't live without.
I ranked their free cash flows and revenue 8 out of 10, their ratios 9 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give the video a like, subscribe, or comment below. If you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.